You know, I always see these commentators on Twitter talking about how they have no topics to talk about and they're asking their followers or viewers or whatnot to give them some topics to talk about. And I've done this before, but I think my intentions are slightly differently than theirs. I always preach, you know, this channel is our channel, so I want to get you guys more involved. And what better way to do that than to, you know, give you guys a hand and a pull in what kind of content gets posted on this channel. Um, you know, one piece of advice for you guys that are commentators is, one, don't fly a jet with Pyre on your team because he will run into you like that. And second off, if you really can't think of any topics to talk about, give your viewers your life experiences. Give them some advice. Give them things that they can relate to and connect to. Whether it's a funny story, a serious story, whatever kind of story you want. It could even be a made-up story if you really choose for it to be so. So, for all intents and purposes, we are going to share a story from we'll say from a friend all right so this friend of mine was 16 years old he was working his first job it was at a retail store a grocery store and it was his first ever job like i said um he was at a point in his life where he was very very curious about a lot of different things um he was really eager to play Battlefield 3 and run a jet into a radio tower. He was very eager to experience everything that he could, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Alright, so he ended up trying shrooms, which for those of you who might not be aware, those are psychedelic mushrooms, you can trip off of them. And he tried shrooms a couple of times throughout his life, up to this point. And... I think it was the third time he tried shrooms. He ate some shrooms while he was at work. Before he went to work, actually. Now, if you guys aren't aware, the quantity that he ate was an eighth of shrooms. Um, where we're from, that's about the equivalent to $40 worth. So it was a pretty decent amount. It was actually quite a bit. And it was the most that he'd ever eaten at once. Now... He, like I said, he was 16, it was his first job. So he usually only worked four or six hour shifts. During the week, it was four hour shifts with school and everything like that. So he ate an eighth of shrooms on his way to work while he was walking there. Went to work, started out like a regular, you know, average day. Clocked in, started, you know, performing his wonderful job duties. And it took about an hour and a half for these mushrooms to kick in, but once they did, they kicked in hard. Now, at the time when they kicked in, I, w er, my bad, he was facing a shelf. Now, if you guys aren't aware of what facing a shelf means, it basically means pulling all the product to the front of the shelf and stacking it, making it look neat, making it the most visible, so on and so forth. And he was stacking a shelf. Now they did a little trick instead of standing up for hours at a time, refilling product and facing product, they would get these little milk carts. They were very small carts that you could push milk, you put milk crates on and push them. And what they did was they'd put two milk crates on it, sit on it, and it was kind of like a little stool with wheels. So he was sitting on this little contraption facing shelves. He was in the soup aisle, so he was facing soup cans, all right? Now, the shrooms started kicking in right during this time. An hour and a half passed by with this fine young gentleman facing the same can of soup. He was picking a can of soup up, putting it back on the shelf, picking that same can of soup up and putting it back on that same shelf in the very same spot. He did this for what seemed like forever. In a daze, very enamored by the colors of all the products on the shelves, there's the textured ceilings and fluorescent lights. The fluorescent lights looked like the northern lights or the aurora lights. The textured, the textured ceilings looked like they were dripping, almost like they were melting in a way. Very, very enamored. Now, like I said, this was only the third, second, maybe third time that he had tried these, so he was still very new to the feeling, to the visual, so on and so forth. Now. 
doing mushrooms isn't like doing acid. It's it's a lot less intense. It's a lot less scary to be honest with you. At, at least that's what my friend tells me. Now he wasn't into drugs or anything like that. Never was. Uh, like I said, he was at a very curious stage in his life, just as most teens go through. And you know, so he was enamored by all these sights, all of the sounds, all of the colors, the feeling. And he heard his name called over the PA system, the loudspeaker, asking him to come to the front end of the store. Very, very nervously, he slowly made his way up to the front end. When he got there, he was very reluctant and relieved to find out that the person that needed his help was a good friend of his. And this individual was a little bit older, but he was very down to earth. You know, he really understood the frame of mind that the 16 year old kid was in. He could relate a lot to him. So he started talking to my friend and my friend, when he was talking to him, he wasn't talking to him in a normal voice like this. He was whispering, he was talking very, very lowly, very faintly, you could barely hear him. But to him, it sounded like he was talking normally, just as I am talking to you right now. So his friend told him, he, he asked him, you know, what's going on? What's wrong with you? Is everything all right? You're talking really quietly. And he had no idea that he sounded quiet. None at all. So his friend, you know, pulled him to the side and, you know, really told him, you're talking very quietly. I really can't hear you. And a lot of people are going to be wondering what's up with you. So, you know, they did a nice little session of trials and errors to try to get his voice to talk at a, at a normal noise level. So what may have sounded normal to you and me didn't sound normal to him, that sounded loud. So how I'm talking to you right now in a normal voice, to him it sounded like this. It sounded like he was screaming at the top of his lungs. Something like that. So he continued on, finally got everything down to how he should sound when he was talking to people. Now this was a 15 minute ordeal in itself, if I remember correctly. So he went through, finished his wonderful job duties, was very, very enamored by the colors, the sights, the sounds, the beauty of the world on mushrooms. Now he lived about five minutes away from his place of employment. So, you know, you walk to work, it's five minutes. You walk home from work, it's five minutes. A five minute walk turned into an hour and a half walk. Just gazing around at a world that he was not so familiar with. Everything was very new. Everything was very raw. Everything was very real. He finally made his way home after journeying through... It, it's not so much a park. There was a bunch of trails in a wooded area. So he figured he'd walk through those, had a very uh, spiritual connection with the environment, made his way home, and he lay down in his bed. Now when he lay down in his bed, he had a blue comforter, and he pulled his comforter over him, and his blue comforter was waving just as an ocean would. After 20-30 minutes of being absolutely intrigued and amazed by the sights of his comforter looking like an ocean he finally started calming down a little bit tried watching TV now he spent an additional 20 to 30 minutes flipping through channels profusely he did not spend more than one to two seconds on a channel without flipping to the next and if I can recall correctly he went through every single channel from his cable provider he went through them, I, I'm not even being, you know, sarcastic and exaggerating, probably 20 to 30 times, it was that many times, until he closed his eyes and slowly faded off to sleep. Now, this is not encouraging anybody to use any illegal substance or mushrooms. It is more or less to open your guys' eyes on some of the things you may experience while on mushrooms, and it is to give you a warning not to use mushrooms while you're at work. 
really, I would say in any social setting whatsoever, work, school, it's more of a uh, chill out with a couple of friends and just take it easy kind of uh, trip, so to say. But anyways, people, let me know what you think about the video. If you guys have any experiences of your own, share them in the comments below. If you like the video, feel free to like the video. And like I said, I'm going to be giving you guys more of these life stories and experiences from both myself and my quote-unquote friend. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put posts up on Facebook and Twitter with three different life experiences of mine. And I'm going to have the first person to respond, pick one of the three, and I will do a video on that topic. So if you're not following me on Facebook and Twitter, make sure to do so. You can find those wonderful links below. And I think that's going to be wrapping it up. So until next time, people, it is your boy, Svendi, and I will catch y'all later. Peace.